Why is there a third Hellraiser, you may ask? Well, it's because Hellraisers 1 and 2 got over 100,000 views. Uh, uh, oh, wait, uh, you meant the movies, didn't you? <laughs> I thought you were talking about the reviews. Uh, sure, um, the first two movies made enough of a profit, so now there's a third movie. Titled Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth, that sets itself apart from the first two movies that took place on Mars. Originally envisioned by Clive Barker to also focus on the character of Julia, however, Claire Higgins declined to participate in further sequels, plus the movie had a troubled pre-production due to the bankruptcy of New World Pictures, so Barker had little involvement until post-production, plus Hellraiser 2 director Tony Randall, envisioning yet another odd couple joke, was removed by producers, although he served as co-writer along with Peter Atkins who also co-wrote Hellbound. Directing duties went to Anthony Hickox, previously of Waxwork 1 and 2. Sounds like a good recipe for a sequel, just don't make it too dark. Seriously, Randall was removed for his vision being too bleak. What? A Hellraiser movie? Bleak? And this original poster was declined for being way too intense. That was the right thing to do. It is a kid's movie, after all. So the poster was replaced by taking the poster of the first movie and putting Pinhead in front of New York. Makes sense, the poster for Hellbound used the same Stephen King quote as the first movie. As we see in the Jason Goes to Hell title card, this is Hell on Earth. Look at the first shot, see? There's a fire, and that is Earth. Let's see who our hero of this film is gonna be. <laughs> Cool points multiplied by 11! Oh, never mind. This is super not so fly. Here is J.P. Monroe, sleazy club owner and art dealer. He's interested in this pinhead piece. Not exactly sure how this happened. Let's just assume pinhead owed money to Jabba the Hutt. Who on earth would make something like this? You want it? I'd love to buy this from you, Chris Christopherson. Not sure that this is the best Valentine's Day gift, but okay. Though here is our real hero, ace reporter Joey. It's a mystery to me. A mystery how those assholes at assignment knew it. Well, she's fired. We got an emergency, Joey. This review needs a Deep Space Nine reference stat, but I think the reviewer is only going to reference back to school. She needs a story. Luckily, this hospital is shot like a horror film. There's got to be something here. Ha, ah, good. A deleted scene from Unplanned. This'll do. <laughs> that is horrifying. We need to outlaw vaping immediately. Then the movie packs up and goes home. Well, you tried. This may be a surprise to you, Brad, but I want to do this the right way. Yeah! <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't open the box. Why is the movie talking to me? Joey investigates the exploding body by going to a nightclub that's promoting the Hellraiser 3 soundtrack. This place looks hardcore. They booked all of the bands from Hell's Bells, The Dangers of Rock and Roll. Meanwhile, in the back room, this place has the best soundproofing that I've ever seen. You can't even hear the metal bands while JP is Costas Mandaloring the hell out of the scene. I'm not sure where this is going. <laughs> anyway, back to Rob Zombie's platoon. Joey finds Terry, the girl from the hospital. <laughs> but let's talk about her dreams instead. It's my father. He died before I was born, but I dream of death and trying to save him. Anyway, that's my shit. About that guy who exploded by chains. He said it came out of this. Given the camera angle, nothing good is going to come out of that box. It is definitely going to be spring snakes. Opening that box seems as good of an idea as sticking your hand inside of this thing. Radhead is when the Cenobites started getting really lazy. 
Never mind opening the box, just spill some blood on the statue. That'll bring Pinhead back to life. The girls bond over breakfast and the days when Terry used to be a reporter. She retired, though, after mistakenly outing Jerry and George. Now stop eyeing my backdrop and tell me about the dead guy. Well, there's a store. It's like really hip, you know, lots of weird shit in there. And I don't know, I saw the statue. Mmm, Montgomery Wards! Got it on a Columbus Day sale, didn't you? They find the art gallery, but discover that it mainly just deals in paintings of Jesse Eisenberg. Oh, and the place is a scam. Weird. JP seems on the up and up. Check it out. It's the box. Ooh, the storyboards. I have the feeling JP might be a little sleazy. Welcome. You're J.P. Monroe, right? That's right. And this is your club? His club has the best Manhattans and the best ADRing in the city. Joey has an amazing lead after gathering a couple of headshots of actors from the previous films. Things aren't going too well, though, for J.P. and his date. But you gave me a rose. And tomorrow, I'll give one to somebody else. I smell a third act breakup. <laughs> They'll get back together. Pinhead will kill anything that moves in this one. He's officially a slasher villain now, especially because this is the first of the Hellraiser movies to call him Pinhead in the actual movie, and not Jesus. Jesus Christ! Not quite! Still gonna have to work on that voice, though. When shooting him surprisingly doesn't work, he has to bring Pinhead more club goers so that he can feed on them and turn into Frank. Wait a minute, I might be mixing the plot lines here. And cut out that racket! I heard some shots, are you okay? Wait, that was in the club? Again, best soundproofing I've ever heard! Joey is given exclusive cameo footage. I wonder if it'll be Ashley Lawrence, who they mistakenly refer to as Kirsty, when her name is Curtsy. I opened it, and I saw what came out. I don't know what else to call them. <laughs> Never mind. What in the hell is Nancy Thompson doing in this? And you can't just leave the box sitting on top of the VCR. It'll get folded and all scratched up. What do you think happened to my copy of Bolero? Thanks, Pinhead! And now she'll be turned into Lolita Head. Or much worse, she'll get a phone call from an ex. This is kind of like the brain that wouldn't die if the head was in a statue and had pins in it. Unfortunately, they're cock-blocked by more random war flashbacks. <laughs> Y'all just don't understand Terrence Malick's Vietnam. No, oh, I've communicated to you from beyond the grave to tell you that that was World War I. Well, that was a weird cutaway. Now let me feed you to a statue. Wait! Just because the demon said wait doesn't mean you have to. Though he does give her a nice offer, a free McRib and a supersized order of heroin if she offers up JP. <laughs> no, he was so nice! Oh, thank God I can move my neck now, but I'd still rather not. <laughs> Hello, I am Brad Jones talking to you over the sound of my PC motor to tell you that today's video is sponsored by writer-director Dustin Mills and his latest film, Slaughterhouse Slumber Party. Let's take a look at a clip. Ooh, that movie better have a slumber party in it. Anyway, Joey tries to sleep despite the painting of a demon boy on the wall. It's also a little hard with Grandpa's old radio in the closet scoring the soundtrack to L.A. Confidential, among other things. Go to the window, Joey. Don't go to the window. She goes to the window. Now what? 
How the hell do I know? But you better think of something. There's still several sequels. She sees Doug Bradley completely out of his Jason makeup, where we see even more flashbacks. Joey, how kind of you to come. You slaughtered your whole platoon, didn't you? See, this is what happens when your war isn't miraculously ended by Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This is pre-Pinhead Elliot Spencer, who still has Pinhead-esque dialogue. What the hell is going on? Hell is exactly what is going on, Joey. Guess she kinda set him up for that one. And I already know how Pinhead was created from the other movies. I know way more information than the lead character does. Although that's how he became an art exhibit. It was the blob that caused it. Elliot wants to face off against his evil self in order to destroy, uh, himself once and for all. And there is a gateway to hell through which he can be taken back. Where is it? Your apartment. That's why rent is so cheap. Let's not forget, we still got a soundtrack to sell. A little hard to play here with all this damn noise. Apparently, this place does not have an age restriction. Someone better shut this place down. <laughs> Oops, I hope the baby's okay. Pinhead's really not dressed out of place here. Although this scene is like the series equivalent of Freddy murdering teens at a pool party. I know I shouldn't ask this in a slasher film, but what did any of these people do? See, that's what's gonna happen to you if you don't buy the soundtrack! Oh god, this is a tragedy. There's gotta be one band member still alive to give me an autograph? Well, I guess the reporters and the police weren't really there. Or they just left to give the dead bodies a couple more extra hours of shut-eye. It was you who did this, wasn't it? There is a secret song at the center of the world, and its sound is like razors through flesh. <laughs> It's she thinks my tractor's sexy, isn't it? Now kill him with insults! You're gonna have to come and get me, you ugly fuck! Just because he doesn't feel the pins does not mean that he doesn't feel your words! I sense a climax coming on. Ah! Yeah, look, we gotta spend the budget somehow. I knew all these explosions were just here to screw with Larry. And thus we have the best Cenobite of all time, Camera Head. His curse is that he can only see an SD. Ready for your close-up, Joey? Though Pinhead will have to kill him for his one-liners not being as good. CD Head, on the other hand, is cursed with always scratching his discs, so I can't listen to any of my Deep Blue Something albums. And then there's Lush Head. The gang is all here. <laughs> Too bad they're all dicks. Dicks with bad puns. That's a wrap. Your life has been put on pause. Press here to eject your soul. I need help, father. And for the last time, I'm not Kimberly Williams. Demons. Demons aren't real. Then what the fuck is that? You're still in a church, little missy! And it's nice of Pinhead to give the guest sermon. I am the way. He's quite the eyesore, but his message from Jesus is still very much on target. Oh right, JP and Terry. Now they're anti-smoking ad head, and I forgot JP was in this head. Oh no, the box isn't supposed to turn against us! <laughs> Shot on shitty o head has been taped over. Guess that's the end. <laughs> There's still 13 minutes left. Best go back to the past again. The fields are peaceful and quiet when there isn't a war. And no, 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 that's not your dad. That is definitely Pennywise. Don't listen to him. See? Now he has the box. Couldn't resist playing games, could you? 
You had to come through the window of her mind. Just like Gemini Man. It was a mistake to make Pinhead Jigsaw's new apprentice. He really strayed away from John's original thesis. However, they must be destroyed before the effects go way over budget. Too late. Pinhead's dead and you're a hundred K in the hole. Now let's bury the thing in the cement in this construction site so that no one will be cursed with the singing frog ever again. Though it will make the architect suddenly want to turn everything into the box for some reason. Find out why in the sequel, or not. It probably won't mention it. And yes, four years later we got another sequel, and you best believe it's the one that goes into outer space. I bet that means it's the best one. It's going to be so good that the director is going to use the Alan Smithy credit for fear of it being too perfect. Unlike this measly, mediocre score where we're told, try to defend it, I dare you. Um, the effects are good. Challenge accepted. We're still in the midst of the Halloween season, but I don't know what movie to do next. Luckily, I have got the tax box here to help us out with a Patreon poll for the next episode. Let's see what our choices are. We have got Scanners. Ooh, I'll bet that doesn't have any sequels. And The Exorcist. I swear I already saw the superior version. Our third choice is... Scream. Oh, hey, welcome back to the poll. And of course, the sacrificial melodrama, Dreamer. It's probably about love and bowling. Subscribe to patreon.com slash the cinema snob to vote on the next episode. And put as much care into your vote as I did the tox box. It took me minutes to rip apart these pieces of paper and write titles on them. <laughs> Have my real glasses been on this whole time? Uh. 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 Oh.